How do we use Assistance API with absolutely no code and start answering emails for customer service? Let's find out. The idea of this tutorial is I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to build out an Assistance API that we can use and access with no code, set up automations for, and then at the end, give you a pragmatic way to start applying this in your business. Welcome back to Corbin AI, y'all, where I'm showing you how to start leveraging artificial intelligence, whether that's just for your business or just going over cool stuff in the news. Check me out on Twitter here real quick if you want to get updated on new videos that are coming out, you know, kind of alluding to it. Also, if you've been following me, I've been saying this, Swedish House Mafia plus coffee is max productivity. I this is I should probably be embarrassed that this says 0.005% fan, but is what it is. Let's jump into today's tutorial and learn how we can start leveraging, leveraging Assistance API. So if you don't know what Assistance API is, and this is the first time you're seeing a video like this, Go ahead and check out that video right there as I go over like just the capabilities of Assistance API. But just so you know what we're diving in today. So we're going to use Assistance API here and we're going to use Zapier. So I'm going to link two videos off to the side here. One that just shows you how to integrate Zapier with OpenAI and the other one just showing you what even Assistance API is. So that in this video, if you do decide to come back, you, you know, have more context. Let me move my mic a little bit closer here. Okay, so we're going to create this actually in OpenAI's front end here. And then we're going to proceed to use it in Zapier's back end. So the purpose of today's video is we're going to create a customer service type bot or API assistant that is trained on our business's data. And we're going to go over through the processes of how do we even get the type of business data, the best way to format our business data and stuff of this nature. So to start off here, we're just going to call this customer service and we'll add a little dash here called web cafe. So your instructions be very uh, specific here. So for us, we're just going to say you are a customer support agent for web cafe AI trained on our business data. So the reason I'm doing just one sentence here is that as you'll see in our Zapier automations, we're going to actually be able to provide additional instructions. So that's what makes the citizens API so cool. One, we can actually save chats, but two, we can actually build on top of contact. We can build on top of instructions for specific use cases and for specific context this will make more sense as we dive into here. Also, I want to point out by the way as well, this is extremely powerful. So I'm making this for customer service, but man, you could do this for a ton of stuff when it comes to assistance API. I can make one train to make eBooks. I can make one train for XYZ reason and load it with data. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and do this. We're going to use a model of GPT-4 1106 preview. As you may or may not know, they've under, they slashed their prices. So it's 66% cheaper actually 67% cheaper than the GBT4 model that we're, we've been used to up to this point. For here though, for our specific context, we're gonna do retrieval and retrieval is going to allow us to add files. Big deal here. So we can add a good amount of files here, but what is very important for you to do with these files is we need to format them correctly. We need to use a .tx, .txt. Why are we doing that? We're doing that because one, it compresses the data so it's smaller file size, but two, alternatively, rather than me loading up a really big PDF that maybe has superfluous information, let's just load up what we care about. And if it looks, you know, aesthetically does not look good, it doesn't matter because we're just feeding it to a bot. That bot's going to read it and that's all that matters because the end conversion point is just so it's trained. Knowing this, let's go ahead and walk through step-by-step step how we're going to do it for our personal marketplace here called Web Cafe Software. We sell a lot of cool stuff here if you wanna check it out. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and grab relevant information that I care about and I wanna train my customer service bot on. To start off here, let's just go to the FAQ page. Now, whether you're an agency that's working on behalf of a business or you're a business yourself, you will know where the readily available information that you care about when it comes to the context of customer service will exist, e.g. past email chains, e.g. past conversations you had in DMs, what were common questions? What were common occurrences? I mean, you could have trained this to be a sales bot as well. So maybe you load up sales data for like, you know, trying to convert individuals on email. So for our context though, I'm going to show you the most minimal or way to approach it. That's kind of just like, let's just load it into a new file and, and just have it all in one file. So for us, we're going to do it by grabbing links of our website that has relevant information that an individual might ask about. So obviously the big one is going to be the FAQ to start. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to link this in the description down below. It's basically what it does is that it will take website links and convert it into text. That is because we're going to be creating a text file together. So I'm going to hit command V here. I am not a robot yet. Um, <laughs> One time, 
imagine the future these videos are just coming out and it's just like wait is that is that actually a corbin ai or is that actually corbin we don't know indistinguishable so what it does obviously is it outputs it like not super attractive but what we're going to do here is we're going to grab the relevant information that we care about so for us we just care about the faq section so we're going to copy this text let's first make a new text file so i'm not sure what it's called on windows but for mac it's called text edit make a new document here we're going to jump back over to this website and we're just going to grab our relevant information so for us we're going to start off with the faq section here so I'm going to hit command C, command V. All right, perfect. So we have our FAQ section so far. And then I'm going to go ahead and make sure I move myself over here. So we're not making too much of a ruckus. Shrink myself down and let's add some more pages here. So I'm going to go back to the FAQ. What else do we care about here? Okay, let's go to the about. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Go ahead and copy this link here. I'm going to come back over to this site, command A, command V. So in your context, you would be providing relevant information about your business that you care about. Is that going to be, I mean, you, this also can go farther than that. Imagine we could provide this in the context of training uh, employees that come into it. So we provide some type of conversational assistant API that's like, hey, what if a customer asks me this? And then it gives a response. Like there, there this could be an internal use rather than external use as well, knowing that. Let's go ahead and just keep adding stuff here. So this is from our about page. So about us, provide relevant information. Let's see if there's anything else I'd want to add here. Okay, so the last page I'm going to add here is going to be our licenses page. This is in the context. If you buy software from us, we have two different types of license. And this is a relevant question we may get asked a lot. Therefore, I'm going to go ahead and make sure we get all this relevant information. Okay, so now that we have all the information here, and look at this, I can just, woo -wee. okay. <laughs> now that we have all this relevant information here, yeah, it doesn't look amazing. Aesthetically, it doesn't look amazing, but who cares? End of the day, AI is going to read it, and all they really care about is the text. So that is why we're going to do it in this type of format. Therefore, if you have a ton of information you want to load onto it, this is how we structure it. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. So right now, I don't know why, and I'm going to go ahead and jump back over here. Uh, Mac, for some reason, doesn't allow us to save as .txt. Therefore, I'm going to use a website just called Cloud Convert. I'm going to upload the R RTF here and then convert it to a text file. And the reason I am converting an RTF to a text.txt is because of the fact that that's even less data associated with it. So you probably got, the, that's probably, I probably hammered that home too much, but the name of the game is the less data you have, but the type of data you provide is important when providing data for models. Okay, so then once we have this data here, I'm going to go ahead and add the file. Then let's go ahead and hit save. Perfect. So we went ahead and have successfully created our assistance API here. We got the instructions. We got the assistant ID, which will be very relevant for us in the future. Here's something really cool, y'all. So we don't have to jump right into uh, Zapier to test whether this is working how we want it to work. We can actually use a feature within OpenAI called the playground feature. No, we're not jumping on monkey bars here. This feature is going to allow us to see, basically gut check the API system to see if it's actually trained on the data, if the responses are up to par, how you want the responses to be, e.g. the instructions. Do I want it to be funny? Do I want it to have humor? Do I want it to be boring? Do I want it to structure in, in bullet points? Whatever it may be, that's where you put it here. From here though, we're just going to say, this is our gut check. Uh, what kind of licenses do y'all offer? So I'm going to hit add and run here. Coming back over here, we have an individual business license and we have a commercial license. Therefore, if this is true, this should bring out an output from that text file we have right here that says that. So let's go ahead and see what it comes up with. I want to point out as well that it seems like internally when using the playground is a lot slower than what I've seen when using it on Zapier or in a code context. There we go. So as we see, we got the individual business license and the commercial license, all the relevant information about those licenses that we provided in the uh, data file. On top of that, more contextual information in regards to this. Really good stuff. Let's take this API and push it towards our Zapier flows and create a pragmatic use case in the context of maybe an individual or a potential lead emails you and you want to set up a draft email trained on the data. Therefore, you can kind of look at it and then hit the final send. In order to do so, we're going to come over to Zapier, y'all. We're going to hit create new Zap. And the use case here is going to be very simple. So we're just going to do trigger. We're going to say uh, Gmail. And there we go. So we're going to go ahead and do an event of new email. I want to point out as well, though, if you say new email matching search. So for example, with our marketplace, we use Shopify as our backend and a very common way that it comes in data wise is like a new customer message. Therefore, if you want to mitigate, honestly, let's just do it that way. So I can really show y'all this is so it's going to mitigate 
and you don't overuse your automations, typically when you receive leads, you can easier, either use sediment analysis by ChatGPT or text found within the email to identify whether it should go down the automation or not. So in the context that maybe you run a Shopify store, we are used to providing or receiving emails with the headline new customer message. Therefore, let's just go ahead and show you how to do that real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the account here. This is gonna be our courses account. And I'm gonna send a fake email to it just so we can have some test data here. Uh, search string will be like new customer message. So in theory, I'd probably put in as much dictation as possible. That's usually correlated with these type of emails. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and just send me a fake email. So if you don't have test data yet, this is really good. I'm just gonna send this to myself. I'm gonna talk to myself. <laughs> and as you see, we got our test data here. What we can do here, and I'm gonna go rename this to uh, API in action. Even though everything's an API call in theory, we're gonna test trigger here. And we should see that as some test data here. We don't see as test data, so let me try again. Now we see as test data, perfect. Just put in a simple body here. Hey, I was wondering uh, for your software marketplace, what are the licenses I could choose from? We're gonna say continuous selected record here. And this is where the magic happens, y'all. We are going to leverage the Assistant API. This is where it's really cool. So instead of conversation, we're gonna do conversation with Assistant. And what's so great about this is we don't have to train it at all. Why? Because we trained it here. So we've already trained it in our assistant's you know, situation here. It's already been trained on our data. It already has instructions on how to respond. Therefore, we can call upon its assistant ID. And the assistant ID itself doesn't have to be a variable. Rather, it can be fixed text because the assistant itself can be used across different automations. You know, it's been centralized to this one type of trained model of ChatGPT. Knowing that for this, we don't have to search for the assistant. We don't have to do any of this. Okay, I guess in theory, you could just click it here. <laughs> that makes it a lot easier. But in theory, I could hit custom here, paste in here and be good to go. But for the sake of this video, let's just hit customer service. As we know, anytime we're dealing with customer service flows in our automations, now we have an API assistant that is dedicated towards these kind of conversations. What this really helps everyone to do is it allows you to basically not need to prompt it as much. You don't need to structure your prompts as good as you used to do it because if you can make one really good assistant API for a specific context, now I don't have to add as much text in this message. But we can still add text and that's what's so cool. There's a layering effect occurring here. So we're gonna say based on this email, uh, email title, email body, notice, the first major thing, if you've been all, if you've been watching this channel for a while now, you're like, wait, we messed up. We didn't add a context block. We don't need context anymore, y'all, because it is the assistant API. No context needed. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and add it because it has a context from the, the back end, right? Uh, set the subject, new customer message, add the body. And you might be asking yourself, why do you have parentheses around it? That isn't to ensure that the data is just like it doesn't overlap with other data points. GBT just likes to read it better like that. So we're gonna say this, generate. Also wanna point out, I could have made the assistant API really specific to the context of emails. But for now, we're just gonna leave it where we have to kind of provide that structure here. I say generate a email response body to this inquiry format uh, max of four sentences at uh, the end sign off with so I'm going to show you a couple of things here sign off with best regards actually we don't need that we can actually add that as fixed text don't do that max is four sentences let's actually just do that for now what I like to do sometimes is limited prompting just to see, kind of feel it out where ChatGPT is thinking. From here though, we can go ahead and hit continue here. Let's test this step and see what it comes out to be. This is good, this happened live. I wanna show you this. So, its response came, it was confident but it was wrong. Why was it confident why was it wrong? Because I accidentally didn't add something that is pertinent here which is existing files. It was the data that we uploaded to this individual already. So we're gonna have to do the web cafe data text. That's what I call mine. Now I'm gonna go ahead and continue here and retest this step. Just to send that home, that was this data text. That's what we created earlier in the video here. We have to reference it in Zapier as well. So it seems like basically that means that assistant APIs can 
choose not to read the data if you choose to do so. So I played around with it a little bit. It actually looks like we need to add a little bit more prompt structuring than I expected. One thing I didn't expect was basically we added the existing file. We added, I added the tools just in case to make sure that it has it enabled to retrieve said existing file. But finally, you got to add a very specific line in your message, which says reference the underlying file for information on the business. That seemed to be pertinent as that basically told ChatGPT, hey, don't give an answer, look at the data and then give an answer. And then as you see from this response here, we have the individual business license referenced earlier and the commercial license referenced earlier. Therefore, here's what we can do that's really cool. We can add another Gmail block here. With this Gmail block, we can go ahead and do something such as setting up a reply or create a draft. So for this draft, I can go continue, continue, hit the subject line. Let's just put in uh, new customer message, draft. And then for the two, we can go ahead and choose where the email was coming from here. So the from email, I can type in from, from email, okay. And coming down here, we can go ahead and put our body, which would be the output found here. So one thing that I didn't necessarily like was the endpoint there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit more text here if necessary. Also, we can add signatures, labels, attachments. You have lead PDFs, stuff of this nature. What I'm gonna do here is one last thing here. I'm gonna say, generate an email response body to this inquiry, just the body, no text before or after, no uh, signature or name at the end. See if that is sufficient here. No text before and after. If you're familiar with this channel, you definitely know what that is. I'm gonna hit retest here. That basically just makes it so sometimes GBT wants to talk too much. No, just give me a specific data point here. That's all I care about. And here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep prompting until I get rid of this part. Perfect. So I got it to the point where it just says best regards. From here, all I need to do to make my life easier is if you have a standard way to responding to this, maybe it's your I could have honestly added it to the prompt as well, how to end a email. But for here, best regards, Corbin. Now let's do Corbin AI. <laughs> I'm gonna continue here. I'm gonna send this to myself and let's see what it does. There we go, y'all. So we got the draft, new customer draft, response to the individual's name, gives us actual response based off our business data. Let me go ahead and zoom in, y'all. Gives us an actual response on our business data and provides it as a draft so I can kind of look over it. Okay, that's good to go, send it. Also, keep in mind y'all, we can train the instructions better. We can add more context to the underlying message here. This all layers on top of each other. It's like a multi, it's like a funnel cake. It all layers on top of each other. Therefore, this whole process can be optimized a lot further. Maybe you want bullet points in your email. Maybe you want attachments in your email. Maybe there is a certain sentence you want in your email, e.g. add the fixed text. Whatever it may be, we have just learned today how to start automating our customer service or at least save us like 90% of the time. Therefore, if you felt like you learned something up to this point or at the end of this video, make sure you leave a like. It's completely free and helps me here. If you want to see more videos like this, when we get to more you know, automations for your business and productivity, I'm going to leave a playlist at the end here. We're diving into a ton of stuff when it comes to artificial intelligence and Zapier and how to start leveraging it. You can check that out here. Also on this channel, I do other stuff. So I do like AI news. There's a really funny video that I did yesterday looking at AI videos, which was like, or a new technology called Pika Art. Well, they existed, but they did an update. Uh, really cool, really cool. So cool that it's like, they got to chill out, maybe a little too fast there. We do other content as well, where we're just diving into how to leverage language learning models, e.g., the chat GBT or all those GBTs you see down there below. But without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Corbin AI, where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.